Please sit, please sit, please sit. Thank you, thank you. Well, one commissioner introduced another commissioner, not so. <laughs> the People's Commissioner of ETU. <laughs> Put your hands together for him. <laughs> Faculty and staff of ETU. Students, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all. Good afternoon to you. We are all happy to be here today, not so? Uh, we are about to talk about a topic that, as you know, as the Commissioner of the ACC, I love talking about. And I love seeing you excited to hearing about it. Are we excited? Yes. We are here to talk about corruption. Young people the fight against corruption and governance is the centerpiece of this lecture, which I rather call a conversation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, yesterday I was having dinner in the house of a distinguished member of the Kelema Society. And I was sitting down with a friend of mine who is 67 years old, and this senior citizen of Kenema, who is just about 75 years old. And then the 75 year old man said, I, and he asked, oh, you are here, what are you here to do? I said, I'm coming to lecture and have a conversation on the fight against corruption with the young people of Kenema. And then he said, ah, I like the fact that you are doing that. These young people are very corrupt. <laughs> they are worse. And then the 67-year-old man asked him, okay, if you say they are correct, then, then who is responsible for it? Who is responsible? Who is responsible for the young people being corrupt? It's a conversation that we should have. Is it even a question of blame? Or we should just build on it to recognize that this is an evil and each and every one of us has a responsibility young and old to do something about it now today now that we have all recognized that it is evil not so is corruption not evil it destroys everything distinguished ladies and gentlemen mr chairman jennifer lawrence an actress once remarked that we need to tell each other our stories we need to show that everyone, our neighbors, our families, our community leaders, everyone you know is touched by corruption. Everyone you know is touched by corruption, old or young. Therefore, a conversation of corruption is all encompassing. It's about everybody. Our roles, our responsibilities, our duties, our strengths. Corruption has been defined by Transparency International as the abuse of power for private gain. The organization goes to explain the following ways by which corruption can be committed. Public servants demanding or taking money for favors in exchange for services is one of the ways. Politicians or people in positions of trust misusing public funds or money. Again, that is one way for corruption to exist. Corporations bribing public officers to get lucrative deals. Anyone who bribes a public officer to get any form of advantage it could be a student who bribes to pass an exam. 
It could be a multinational company who wants to build roads in Kenema and decides to bribe the authorities. All of them are corrupt. For the World Bank, it is seen as a form of dishonesty or criminal offense undertaken by a person or organization entrusted with position of authority. Therefore, at the, at the center of a conversation on corruption, the wordings might be different, but there is one thing that is central to it. Entrusted power or authority. There is somebody who the public has said represent us. Whether it's a teacher, whether it's a minister, whether it's the president, whether it's the commissioner of the anti-corruption commission, as long as you are representing a section, you are entrusted with power. When we speak about corruption, there is that centrality. When you do something that goes against that sacred responsibility because you have been otherwise induced, you are corrupt. As I have often said, Sierra Leone's Anti-Corruption Act does not really define corruption. Maybe they had a good reason for doing so. But they went to identify offenses which could be regarded as corrupt. And they include bribery, misappropriation of public and donor funds, corrupt acquisition of wealth, unexplained wealth, bid rigging, impersonation, failure to declare your assets, etc., etc. These are all offenses. Things you can do which the law will consider to be corrupt. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, issues of corruption has been at the center, have been at the center of four of governance discourse in the last decade. There has been no other time when conversation of corruption or concerning corruption has taken center stage in Sierra Leone than now. Everybody is interested to talk about corruption because we all know that it is a danger, not so? And you go on WhatsApp, people are having a conversation. We at the ACC have a PR system that informs you in real time about things that are happening. We are identifying offenses. The Scorpio squad is ready. People in their stronghold. We are recovering money, hard cash, billions of, of euros, millions of dollars, and returning it to the state in your eyes. We are taking people to court. We are prosecuting and getting judgments against them. And I have a big call. You all have recognized and you have been playing your own part by talking about it, by inviting all the ACC to do more, by pushing the government to be a lot more transparent and hard to contribute. You must work for yourself because that is the beginning. That is the beginning of the social transformation that we all need and seek. Governance itself is defined by the United Nations as the process of decision making and the process by which decisions are implemented or not implemented. Governance is now synonymous or used in terms of good governance, democratic good governance, participatory, consensus oriented, accountable, transparent, respondent, effective, efficient, equitable, and inclusive and follows the rule of God. When we talk about governance, these are the words that come to mind. And most times, we really need good governance. From the aforementioned definition, we know that some of the key features of good governance include accountability, transparency, effectiveness, efficiency, and the rule of God. Accountability is derived from the Latin word computare. Accountability comes from Latin, computare. 
which means to count. To count. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, to be accountable requires a person to produce a count or either the properties or money that has been left in his care. So that is where all this work comes from, for accountability. It comes from computary and large of says to count. And when we really say to count, it's a question. Remember at the beginning of this lecture, I told you that the thing that runs through the definition is what? Somebody who has been given trust also, somebody who has been given authority by a section of the people. So, in terms of governance, it now means when they say you should account, it comes from the Latin origin where you count. They have given you 50 grains of rice. At the end of your stewardship, how many grains of rice do you have? Do you multiply? When you multiply, where is the original that was given to you? And where is the one that was given that was added to you? If you cannot provide it, then you are not a good one. And it is used to denote openness, responsiveness, or honesty. As Christina Georgieva of the World Bank puts it, a lack of transparency fears corruption, a corrosive force that hits the poor and vulnerable the highest. Do you know that it is the poor who pay for corruption? Do you know? It is there. And she captures and says, a lack of corruption fears, a lack of transparency fears corruption, a corrosive force, force that hits the poor and the vulnerable the highest. The rule of law, on the other hand, as defined by A.D. Dyson, is administration by the law. We are all men are subject to the same and equal treatment under the law in a way that is devoid of arbitrariness. Effectiveness and efficiency refers to the proper use of public resources to ensure proper public service delivery. Now, I have told you what corruption is. I have also told you what good governance is. What then does corruption do to good governance? When it comes to combating corruption, there is no other urgent social menace we must address as a nation. The OECD acknowledges that corruption threatens good governance. Listen to this very carefully. It says corruption threatens good governance sustainable economic development, democratic processes, and fair business practices. Corruption threatens all of them. Where there is corruption, it is difficult to get good governance. It is good, difficult to get sustainable economic development. Why we are saying the young drive? It's because we are still battling with corruption. We are doing the lot. But as we are doing the law, there are people who are committed to reversing the game by doing the very things that we are holding them accountable for. Therefore, it becomes difficult to plan the economy. That is why the poor and vulnerable of every society have always been adversely affected by acts of corruption. Perhaps that is why the Pope Francis once remarked, Pope Francis, we all know Pope Francis, not so, the head of the Catholic Church, not so. This is what he said. He said, corruption is paid for by the poor. Corruption is very expensive, but it is the poor people who pay for it. James Bufuzi of the World Bank, one said that corruption was a cancer that diverts resources from the poor to the rich, increases the cost of running business, distorts public expenditure,
and digital foreign investors. Where there is corruption, people who want to do business in the country will not come. They will look at the country. They look at their money. They say, I'm not going to put it there. And if there's no money, there's no foreign direct investment, then of course we start to continue to battle the things like employment. Because the more people invest in businesses, the more the private sector booms. And why the private sector booms, the more jobs and employment will be provided for everybody, particularly the young people of the country. But corruption drives all that. Joe Biden, Joe Biden, once he's tried corruption as a cancer that eats away a citizen's faith in democracy, diminishes the instinct for innovation and creativity. Where there is corruption, people don't even want to work hard because they know that they can cut corners. Not so. Why do you have to work hard when you can find a shortcut around it? So that may, it, it reduces creativity. People don't, they don't think. They don't create. And we sit here and admire other countries have great innovators in the 21st century innovation is leading the way. Science and technology is leading the way. But when corruption has consumed a nation, the people cannot be creative. Because they are looking for shortcuts, they are caught in corners. They are finding the simplest and easy ways out. That is why our school children are not studying. Because they believe that a principal can ask them for two million euros, take them to a special room, and bring a mathematics professor to dictate the mathematics exam to them, and they pass. That is why we are not investing in creativity. The universities have mostly the same old curricula that the world is moving away from. We are sticking ourselves to the past, which is not preparing us very well for the 21st century in which we live. And again, that is exactly what corruption does. The current government recognizes. The current president realized that one of the greatest needs of the real in addition to education was a robust and strong fight against corruption. He therefore empowered the Anti-Corruption Commission to do more. He called and challenged us to take on this challenge like never before. So, when speakers here, we are confessing and professing and saying, they are not saying that corruption has been eliminated entirely, but they are saying that the effort against corruption now is better than ever before. Do you disagree? We are being But all of us have to follow up. We are not out of the rules. The fight against corruption has been built on prevention, public education, prosecution, and investigation. The commission is empowered to do all of this. It's one of the widest mandates that any anti draft body in the world is given. For prevention, we are reviewing institutions, checking what are the problems, what are their systems and processes, what wrongs are there, what can we remove for them to be more efficient and do better. And we are doing a lot more of that now than ever. For investigation, we are checking those who, despite our public education drive, continue to engage in and bringing them together. That is why we are recovering billions of money 
That is why we are charging dozens in courts every year. For public education, Mr. Sanidia and his team, all of them, Mr. Blake, they have been speaking to you. Not so? Yes. Don't you hear a lot more about corruption on the radio, people discussing it than ever before? Yes. The newspapers every day have articles. We are engaging the citizenry. And of course, it is this very reason why I am standing here right now to deliver a public lecture on corruption. And I must thank Mr. Kelfala Kwai, the regional manager, the commissioner in the east, who represents the ACC as his head here. He's there. I'm sure most of you may know him, but several don't know him. Mr. Kelfala Kwai, the regional manager, is doing a fantastic work co co coordinating our activities in the east. Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a lot has been done about corruption in the past four years. I'm sure all of you have been following. You have been following those who measure corruption have come and gone back and there is one thing they are saying. There continues to be incremental improvement in the fight against corruption. Let's take them one by one. Afro barometer measured the prevalence of corruption in Sierra Leone in 2015. And they said that corruption was existing in Sierra Leone 70%. That means 70% of Sierra Leone was corrupt, only 30% was not. Can you imagine that kind of statistics? After President Bio was elected on the promise of fighting corruption, and the great effort he has put in personally, but also through the agents that are responsible, not just the Anti-Corruption Commission, but the Audit Service Sierra Leone, the NPPA and other institutions, there has been a reversal of that trend. Today, the same Afrobarometer came again and measured corruption prevalence in 2020. And they confirmed that corruption has reduced from 70% to 40%. We must back our system. The MCC control of corruption scorecard, when President Bill was elected, it was at 49%. 49 is a failure in your school. Not so, you school children. Is 49% a pass? 49% is a fail, not so. And indeed, it was a fail. If Azeria Young failed to qualify for the compact, when we got 49% that year. President Bill came and said, this has to change. And through the work and commitment of all of us, what do we have today? In 2018, that 49% changed to 71%. In 2019, that 49% went up even further to 79%. In 2020, it even went further to 81%. And in 2022, in 2022, it went to 83%. So, if you want to know that collective efforts can produce a result, just look at the result that we have produced in the fight against corruption in four years. In Transparency International, which is the most respected index on the fight against corruption, Sierra Leone was stagnant for three years. We were on 33 score, 32, and we could not move. After President Bio became president, and committed to fighting corruption and the efforts that we have put in. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Sierra Leone jumped 10 places in one year alone. 10 places, one year, 2019. We jumped 10 places upwards. 
from from 131 ranking in the country, we went up to 115. We have started gaining respectability again. Sierra Leone is today respected in the world for the fight against corruption. In Africa, we are the example that they use to discuss a country that we invest inside when it comes to corruption. People go to meetings all over the world. They say, no, you people in Sierra Leone, what you are doing is a miracle. People go to meetings in Geneva, Mozambique, in the US, they are sitting there and other people are using Sierra Leone as an example. A country in 2015, Sierra Leone was rated as the most corrupt country in the world by Transparency International. Today, Sierra Leone is being respected by everyone. We must clap for ourselves. And once the president told me, I went to see him on some other issue, but more about the fight against corruption. And then I met a letter on his table. So when we were speaking, he kept looking at me and looking at this letter. And then he told me, he said, do you know I have just been invited to address the United Nations on corruption? Our president is addressing the United Nations on corruption. We must clap for Sierra Leone. The entire United Nations sat down and said, let us call President Bio to come and lecture us on the fight against corruption because he's doing so well in Sierra Leone. These are things we don't talk about. But it is significant. There are other presidents. There are other countries. But he was the one who was identified by the United Nations Secretary General to say, come and address us because they are all following what is happening in Sierra Leone. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying that Sierra Leoneans have become angels overnight. I am not saying that policemen are not still taking bribes somewhere. The only thing I am saying is we are putting a lot of effort to avoid that happening. Not so. We are chasing them. We are attacking their strongholds. We are arresting some. We are persecuting them. And above all, one thing you have to know is this. Because one policeman or one teacher does something wrong, does not mean all other policemen and teachers are doing wrong. In fact, it could be the exception more. And I can tell you, even when Afro Barometer checked, there has been drastic reduction of corruption in the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the civil service, for example, the civil servants. Corruption was 75% in 2015. The same international organization came and measured again and said corruption has reduced to 35% in the civil service. The same thing in the police. The same thing in the judiciary. So we are not saying that we are out of the woods. But if anybody tells you that we are not doing well with the fight against corruption, tell that person that it's a lie. Sierra Leone is doing its best. So, we are at a position where everybody is confirming that we are doing well. Every index, every survey, even a local survey that was done by the PFM of Consortium, Consortium in Sierra Leone, confirmed that the effort against Sierra Leone is well. That now brings me to the question. How do you young people help us sustain this? Because if anybody is going to inherit this, if anybody is going to build on this, it is you. It is you who are going to inherit the positions. You are going to be the ministers. You are going to be the presidents. You are going to be the director generals. You are going to be the directors, the managers. You are going to be heads of the police. You are going to be heads of the army. You are going to occupy the public and civil service. You in universities are being prepared for this. That brings me back to the conversation that we had yesterday between 
the 67 year old man and the 75 year old man are you the young people going to accept that characterization do you want to be considered as corrupt you don't these things are more in what you do than what you say therefore i am going to give you some clues united nations estimates that the current global population is 7.8 billion and this is expected to grow by 8.6 billion by 2030. Africa's current population stands at 1.2 billion. So what do we do to leverage this capacity? Firstly, take advantage of education. Education is not just about going to, to, to school. It's about you imbibing those things so that you can be able to contribute meaningfully to society. An educated person understands what is corruption and what is not. An educated person can earn a living. An educated person can analyze more and they will be able to change society. All of you have heard about Ye Dominion Ye, not so? You heard about Ye Dominion Ye. Do you know the danger of Ye Dominion Ye? It is people who are not in Eastern Technical University going to get fake degrees. They are not at Frabe College. They are not at IPAM. They are not at Anes Baikroma University in the North. They are not at Unimac. So why you people are studying to get your degrees so that you can come out and get jobs, they buy fake degrees and occupy those jobs. So when you come out, you don't have a job. That is the danger. And when you see the Anti-Corruption Commission is coming out to say all of us have a responsibility to fight against this. Some people said that the Anti-Corruption Commission said it does not have a role to play with Ye Dominion. That is the biggest lie. The Anti-Corruption Commission did not say that. The Anti-Corruption Commission said there are other institutions responsible to ensure that these credentials are proper. Let them do their job. The Tertiary Education Commission, the Public Service Commission, the Public Sector Reform Commission, the HRMO, the cabinet secretariat, all of them have a role to play. Where are they? They should play their role. We will support them to ensure that the credentials that are there work for our children. And of course, we are investigating. Those who are found wanting will take responsibility within the law. But the most significant thing which all of us have to do is to first of all recognize now these things are danger, and they are the danger to all of you sitting here. People who are not qualified want to take your jobs because they don't want to study like you. So you come out from a technical university, you worked hard, and you cannot get a job because someone who stole a degree, who lied about his degree, is occupying the position. That is why all of you have to play a role. You can serve as community informants and whistleblowers to expose corruption in your communities. Young people, I want you to listen. You can serve as community informants and whistleblowers to expose corruption in your community. Use the social media. Cause noise. Draw attention like you are already doing. Who will act on it. Set up youth groups to serve as anti-corruption ambassadors in your universities and communities. How many of you, where is the commissioner of ETU? Commissioner, have you set up a mini anti-corruption commission in ETU? Where you are committed, you bring other young people to expose corruption. If you have not, you have to do that now.
It is not just get to get a year like the commissioner. <laughs> it's to do the work like the commissioner. And I'm sure you will. You have to champion the cause of the ACC and stand by the institution to fight corruption. You have to raise awareness about corruption. More generally, live with this mantra. When you see something wrong, say something. Turn to somebody by you and say, when you see something wrong, say something. When you see something wrong, say something. You must have the skills. The government is already doing a lot to invest in young people. Today you hear about the youth in agriculture, not so? Yes. You heard of youth in agriculture, not so? Yes. Our agriculture advocates, are you here? Youth in agriculture, youth in fishing. We have projects including car wash, soft loans, loans that are meant to support young people to engage in enterprise. Munafa, you've heard of Munafa, not so? You've not heard of Munafa? Take advantage of Munafa. It's so we know you have a creativity, the government wants to give you money to bring it to reality and do business. Grab these opportunities. The country is, corrupt, is, is currently confronted by examination of malpractice. We are battling against it. From all fronts, some people are saying, why is this commissioner so interested in going after examination of malpractice? Because it is the foundation. You destroy the children, you destroy everything. Corruption has decided to get hold of the very future of Sierra Leone. And the young people are the ones that it has gone for. So they do not study anymore. They are going to become the economists, the lawyers, the medical doctors. They are going to be the ministers, the statesmen. They are going to inherit the positions that are currently occupied. If they are spying and mass and are not studying, I am going to get sick one day and one of them will be the doctor. You are going to get sick one day and one of them will be your doctor. What do they do to you? A man who cheats his way through life will continue to cheat his way through life to the end. They are the ones buying the Dominion, the Dominion University degrees. But it is a danger to all of us because we will have economists that are not economists. We will have lawyers that are not lawyers. We will have agriculture experts that know nothing about agriculture. So, our soils may be rich, but we will die hungry. Mr. Chairman, this is call to action for our young people and all of us. I have endeavored to give you a few ways we can leverage the capacity of young people in the fight against corruption. As it stands, Sierra Leone's greatest hope lies in you. Well, but take just note, we have identified corruption as a common enemy. We must now attack it head on because our very survival depends on it. This is a watershed moment in our history. We should either get it right and prosper as a country or get it wrong and perish as a people. As a nation, this our generation must take collective action against the cancer of corruption. Together we can win. We must work together, draw inspiration from the courage of a great forest by Buren, Senge I.T.A. Wallace Johnson, Kailondo, Nyangwa, Ella Koblo Gulama, Lamina Sanko, Constance Comis, John, etc., etc. All of them, let's draw courage for them. Let us remember what they wanted Sierra Leone to be. Why they were courageous enough to stand up against the things that they did. Badura was not an educated man. He did not know the letters that you know. He did not wear the suit that I'm wearing. He did not speak the Queen's language. 
but he was ready to stand up for what was right. Do not ask me for money for what belongs to me. That is how he understood it and he was ready to stand. If we all understand corruption to be wrong, what are you doing about it? In your various institutions, how are you standing against it? No one has ever become a hero by not standing up. How well are you standing? We all have a responsibility to make a difference. And that time is now. We have a president that has created the environment for it. I invite all of us to take advantage of it. I thank you. Oh, some of people will be better than that. Mm -hmm. And it's time when you go, you go come right back. Oh, see, money will go build schools and roads. One person go chop and get.